Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask unanimous consent that I be added as a co-sponsor both to your bill and to Senator Hawley's am amendment. Uh, Without objection. This is an incredibly important issue that this committee has addressed many times. And the problem of big tech censorship keeps getting worse and worse. They keep getting more and more brazen. As they accumulate power, Silicon Valley believes there is no power on earth that can constrain them. We saw the latest illustration of this just yesterday, where YouTube announced that it is going to remove any content online that alleges widespread election fraud. And I have in front of me an article uh, from The Hill from yesterday, the title of which is YouTube to remove content that alleges widespread election fraud. I ask for unanimous consent that this be entered into the record. Without objection. YouTube said that it's going to pull down, it's going to block content, quote, that misleads people by alleging widespread fraud or errors change the outcome of the presidential election. They're not even pretending anymore. Reuters polling shows that 39% of the American people believe this election was rigged. That should make all of our hearts ache. That is not good for democracy when nearly half of Americans believe an election is rigged. Now, the members of this com committee may have meaningful substantive dispute about the extent of voter fraud, how widespread it is, what forms it comes in. When Jimmy Carter and James Baker formed a bipartisan commission to study voter fraud, they concluded it was a significant and serious problem that needed to be confronted. And last I checked, Democratic President Jimmy Carter is not some crazed right-wing nut job. And yet YouTube, apparently, if you sat online and read the Carter-Baker Commission out loud, YouTube just might well block you because in this Orwellian world, you are not allowed to speak anything they happen to disagree with. If they don't like people alleging voter fraud, if they don't like people putting forth videos that they say constitute voter fraud, if they don't like public debate, then they should stop having monopoly power over the public forum and the public square. Now, some of my Democratic colleagues look at big tech censorship and think, well, they're only censoring the other guys. This is a dangerous power to cede. Even if you happen to temporarily like the politics of big tech today, I ask my colleagues on the Democratic aisle, do you really want to submit total control of the public debate to a handful of Silicon Valley billionaires, modern day oligarchs, with money and power and no accountability. They are not elected by your voters. They are not elected by my voters. They're not elected by anyone. And I'll tell you, YouTube CEO sat in my office some months ago, and she was describing a decision to, quote, demonetize a journalist, an entertainer, Stephen Crowder, who has a conservative slash libertarian show on YouTube, very popular. If you talk to young people, there are a lot of young people that love listening to Stephen Crowder. Now, look, Stephen Crowder can be off color. He's a comedian. There are not a whole lot of comedians that are G-rated. Stephen Crowder isn't G-rated either. But YouTube made the Orwellian decision to, quote, demonetize him because he had gotten into an insulting fight with another journalist, and they were both insulting each other. And I recount that because the YouTube CEO sat in my office and she admitted Stephen Crowder didn't violate any YouTube policies whatsoever. He was entirely consistent with their terms of service. But they nonetheless demonetized him anyway, simply shut off his ability to earn any revenue. And by the way, this is how the man earns his living. Demonetize. I ask everyone here to think how they would feel if some massive corporation demonetized you, just zeroed out your bank account. That is an incredible power. And, you know, she said, well, gosh, you should be really grateful because we didn't pull him down. 
She said, some on the left were urging us to block his content altogether just to silence him. We didn't do that. You, you should be really happy with us. And the point I made to her in my office, I said, let me be clear. Number one, the two sides are not doing the same thing here. I am not asking you to pull down liberal content. I'm not asking you to pull down socialists. I'm not asking you to pull down communists. I disagree with liberal content and socialists and communists, but I believe in free speech. It is only one side that is demanding of big tech that they censor the views they disagree with. This legislation is an important step because 230 has served the purpose it served when these were nascent companies has long since passed. These are the most powerful companies on the face of the earth, and they feel zero accountability to any elected official. For all of us who care about free speech, that should worry us greatly. YouTube's latest policy is ridiculous. And by the way, if they disagree with someone saying there's widespread election fraud, there's a mechanism for that, which is they can share their own views. You can counter it. You can say, I think this is all baloney. That's fine. That's called free speech. But simply exercising monopoly power to say the views that I don't like shall disappear and have never exist, that should scare everyone.